chairman of the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee, my good friend Bart Stupak. Uh, Bart, why don't you start by telling us why you thought this hearing was so important? Well, Bruce, you and other members wanted to come down here and, and see what was happening in the Gulf. And I always believe that in oversight and investigations, so sending people to Washington, Washington should get down and interview the people and, and see how this oil spill is impacting them. And it was a great hearing we had today, and thanks for participating. Well, one of the things that's important is to hear from the voices of the people whose lives are being impacted by this oil spill. But right now we're up in a Coast Guard plane flying over the well site and looking at where some of the relief wells are being drilled. What are some of your impressions having seen it with your own eyes? What's well, amazing, the, uh, first you see the sheen, then you see that moose, that brown pudding substance. That's uh, oil with dispersants in it. But then when you fly over and you, and you see the, the uh, burning off a little bit of the oil, uh, the flaring of the gas, I should say, and, and all the ships involved in, in trying to get control of this, and you can't get control of it. We're in a plane, we're flying probably at least 150 miles an hour, and the vast area that is polluted from this oil is amazing, absolutely amazing. But I think the most important part of today's hearing, we're hearing from the two widows that showed up to testify for us, and how because their husbands were killed on a rig out here in the Gulf, somehow they're limited in the liability. They're limited in what they can collect. These are young widows with young families, and while they may sound generous at first, uh, somewhat of a settlement, or maybe they'll keep our salary going for a little bit, it's only a matter of time, and these people are gonna be destitute, all because their husbands were working hard for an employer and to bring energy to our country. And uh, they lose their lives and they have a limitation in liability. We must change that. I think you hit on a really important point that until you're up here over the site, you cannot appreciate the magnitude of this oil spill and how far reaching this oil dispersal is. Well, in the marshes we were in last night, then, and I know you're there, uh, you know, it was 850 miles in that small section where of in and out, in and out, you know, little coves, little bays uh, down there. And once that oil gets in those marshes, that cane as they call it, you can't get it out. The only way is Mother Nature will eventually flush it out. You might see a little line on, on the weeds, or the cane I should say, but get in there a little bit. You don't know how many animals are being killed, how many birds are being killed. It's stuck in there and it's just not going to come out. You got to flush it. I mean, but, but the size of it is massive. I mean, we're in a big aircraft, and we're only seeing a small part of it, and it's massive. The slick is amazing. Well, I've really enjoyed working as your vice chairman on the committee, and keep up the great job.